looks like a man Lord, that lamb just moved on that stand I got movement in the cellars, I got footsteps in the hall There's no time to waste, I better make some calls I gotta get ready, make everything right Cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight Hey, round up the team Let's get started Hey, this is brother mine There's a party and you're invited We got the camera set Let's turn off these lights Cause all my rowdy friends are goes hunting tonight Has a long history, it should be real, real good for activity. And we got the house wired for sound and got motion alarms setting all around. Got a box full of batteries ready to go, and everyone's itching to start this show. Got our logo tees driving black SUVs, and that one bald guy with a slick goatee. <laughs> Friends are goes hunting tonight. Hey, round up the team. Let's get started. Hey, this is your big brother, Mike Cohen. There's our party and y'all invited. We got the camera set. Let's turn on these lights. It's all my ride of friends are goes hunting tonight. That's right. Go get them, boys! And welcome, everybody, to Pima TV. Today is... August 24th, 2012. Yes, it is. It is almost September already. Yes, it is. Um, been an interesting day, to say the least. Yeah. Um, first little bit of news, we have to, we have to say this. Um... Little Green Men Days last weekend, roaring success, double the, double the people that showed up. Absolute blast. And I got to play with Baby Houdini, yay! Yes, she did. Um, first of all, we need to thank Mr. Nick, uh, Dwayne Brown, and his entire crew that helped us. Uh, we oh, did break Ma that Ma on. Mason, Tennessee. Let me tell you, if Mason, you Tennessee ever rocks. have car issues, you better pray you are stuck in that town. Because those people completely rock. Yes, they do. Helped us out more. It helps build your confidence in the human condition and spirit to, to run across that. Um, yeah, we broke down more than I could have ever com even thought about fixing. And more for them, we wouldn't have got home in a timely manner. We just have to say thank you to them. And once again, a great shout out. Um, if you're ever going down 40 between Memphis and, and Jackson, uh, stop in there at the BP. It's a little bitty exit, only one gas station off yeah. the exit, right there. And you can't, you don't get any better than that. Um, also, real quick, everybody can see that I've got up the little uh, flag over there for World TV. If you want to catch any of our archives, be sure to go to the World TV tab, which is right above the player here on the website. Um, and you can catch all our archives there. Plus, we've got new shows coming. We've got a great cooking show, Cooking with Jack. It's coming starting Saturday. Um, tonight, right before us, was the first time that... Uh, Paranormal Raw Truth had been on. And Marie will be back Sunday. Marie will be back on Sunday. Yes, she will, with an enlightened numbers. It's all kinds of stuff. All kinds of great stuff going on. But tonight, the reason why everybody's here. Tonight, we are joined, and I hope I don't butcher anybody's name. One I'm really confident in, one I'm a little shaky on. Um, tonight, we are joined by James McCann and Jason Jarvey. You got it. That's it. Way to go. All right. Um, I'm proud of you. Yay. Um, James, you're a, a paranormal investigator, a documentarian. A lecturer, yes, an author, and he starred on my ghost story. Yep. See, I did more homework yes. than you did. 
And Jason, you are the guy sitting next, next to, to him. him. Yeah, J- Jason here, he's the new guy to the group. He's been with us for about a year. Yeah, about, about, a, year. about a year now. So, so. you're with uh, paranormal group Erie County, Pennsylvania, and I'm not even going to go into the a- APG because blah, 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 I won't mess it up. See what it's for. <laughs> Three, don't feel bad. There's other people that, you know, they, they, they see the APG slash ECP. Sometimes they think, oh, ACDC, you know what I mean? But that's basically just the, the letters of our paranormal group Berry County PA. No, we understand completely. I'm I'm the face, the the body, and the one hiding behind Pima. Oh, okay. Uh, gotcha. That's who you are. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. <laughs> All right. But uh, yeah, we uh, I did a segment of ghost stories uh, with Robin Marie. Y'all know Robin Marie, right? Absolutely. She's of been course. on our shows three times. Three times at least. And she will be back again Monday. Yep. And yeah. I think James will be too. Yeah, she's bringing James with him, so yeah. he'll be the guy sitting next to her on Monday. Um, <laughs> Got all <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Were you guys, uh, when it comes to the group, I guess, uh, Jason, I, I can only assume that you're 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 part of the, the, the paranormal group, correct? Yes. Um, head tech guy? Tech guy, investigator. See, I'm pack mule, but she makes me carry all the stuff. Yeah, whenever I have battery problems, like... <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the good thing about being being a female founder and the only female on the team. Yeah, she she kind of she doesn't she doesn't use that against us at all. No. Um, <laughs> what I, I and, and we 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 ask this of a lot of in fact all of our guests. Um, and I guess Jason, I want to, I want to, because James, I know we actually have a very in-depth answer. I'm sure you're coming with, but Jason, I have to know your motivation. What got you motivated in the paranormal? I've had my own experiences ever since I was a little kid. Yeah, I, I think that applies for most of us too. And that was a very yeah. long explanation it was. by him. I'm just well, giving you trouble. I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, the one that I believe I've been followed around by my grandfather a lot right. and uh, he would always play little pranks like turning pictures around on walls and every once in a while I'd feel a tap on my shoulder to let me know I'm doing something wrong <laughs> yeah. yeah it's no fun when, when, when they stick around after they're gone to tell you you're messing up yeah and James your, your, your motivations they, they they also got a little a little foundation down in in, in New Orleans, don't they? Oh yeah, I was down there in two thousand, and um, that you could say that's when I started really getting into the paranormal, um, the the rich history and the you know the culture, you know all that voodoo and the cemeteries, you know uh, how do I say? Uh, like down in New Orleans, they the cemeteries are above because of the level of the sea level. Right. Everybody is buried on top. They don't bury you in the ground six foot. Uh, and just just the whole culture city thing. Uh, the, the ghost tours I went on down there, and they just got me fueling. And you know some minor experiences that. You know, I took as, hey, get into the paranormal. You know, because usually when somebody asks me, you know, well, how do you, how did you get into the paranormal? Uh, basically, I just tell them that I was basically drawn into it. You know, it's not like I had, you know, a, a big experience or something like that. It's just over the years, I just felt slowly being drawn into it. you can understand that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, being in New Orleans, I mean, you've, you've got the whole Marie Laveau thing. You've got the whole voodoo. Oh, yeah. You've got the, the little gree-gree bags. And... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually loved it down there. You know, very interesting city. I've, 
I, I, to state happen. But in my there. former occupation, um, I actually went down yeah. there, uh, and the food I said, and I know this is a big shock to everybody coming from a fat guy, but the thing I miss <laughs> most about down there is the food. Ooh, yeah, Cajun. Oh Cajun. my lord! You know, I've I've had a lot of sandwiches and a lot of hamburgers in this country, but I haven't had anything yet that even comes close to comparing to a, a, a real po' boy sandwich. Yeah, you know when I when I first went down there, I was so used to saying hokey because that's what we call them up this way. And uh, I walked into a store down there, and I went to the back, and they were making. Uh, Po' boys, and I didn't know what the heck a po' boy was. So I walked in and I, I go, hi, you know, I'd, I'd like a, you know, a, I want to get a hoagie. They looked at me like, you know, what the heck? you know, what is that? <laughs> what, what country are you from, there, sir? <laughs> and and I must have stood there for about three or four minutes trying to explain what a hoagie was, and then then the guy finally says, oh, oh boy. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, but, Just give me a sandwich. It took me a while to get used to saying po oh boy, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, right. w one thing we've, we we try to, here on Pima TV, we want we want to give everybody, um, and especially our viewers, we like to give them different perspectives. Um, and James, I'll start with you this time, so I started with uh, Jason last time. Um, what do you think we're researching when we go out there? Um, sometimes... I like to believe that it's really a physical presence, um, but sometimes I think it's more an energy presence. Um, like what, what I what I mean by more of a physical presence uh, is like I'm standing here physically; you can see me, okay, and then. Jason, for example, say he's uh, a spirit or something like that. He's there, okay, but he's invisible. That's what I mean by physical, physical. Uh, right. Part. Now, <clears throat> what I mean by the energy part is uh, typically the energy uh, is in the air, um, basically kind of like past. Uh, I see it. I always screw this up. Uh, like a residual type energy? Like it's imprinted on the area? Well, that would be like, that would be more into like what type of haunting, like the type of haunting. I'm talking more telepathic. I got you. I got you. Telepathic energy. Like, for example, uh, when we hear disembodied voices, you know, uh, it's a telepathic energy, or a frequency, you could say, but uh, the energy is close. It, it, it's all around. So, yeah. Well, then at times, then both physical and energy beings would be there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you don't know how many are in a building and you happen to actually see a full body... That doesn't mean that there aren't four or five others sitting there going, he did it, he showed himself, watch this. Right, right, right. Um, because we, we've heard different teams get stuff, get EVP of them talking about us while we're investigating. Right. So, I mean, if they're a practical joker in life, they would be in death and, you know, they'd put the one newbie up to show yourself go ahead they, they won't notice and see sometimes i also think that uh it could be uh spirits are manipulating elements um for example i remember i remember one time i was investigating oh you'll hear about this later uh with uh an old place out here. It's burnt down now, but it's called Good in the Bridge. It's an old, an old historic bridge. And when I've gone into investigating the bridge, uh, when I would go out there, sometimes I would get the uh, sense that 
um, whenever whenever I felt like the wind come by me, there there was a there was a temperature difference. Like say it was cold, and then when it came in and it hit you, it was like warm. And then uh, <clears throat> I remember one incident when that happened, and when that when that uh, warm air hit me, I, I it was like a telepathic disembodied voice was upon that wind. Does that sound nuts or crazy to you? Not to us, Not but to us. that's what but, we do. <laughs> I mean, we're the crazy. You know, that's what I'm thinking. You know, we're, we're the crazy couple in the graveyard. So, yeah. You know, I mean, but, but no, sir, no, sir. That doesn't sound strange at all. I mean, uh, to a certain degree, you know, a lot. One of the theories is that it that it takes spirits some form of white noise, whether it's wind or, uh, uh, like Michael Esposito, for example, has even done experiments where he's um, crumpled uh, leaves near his microphones. Right. To to give to give to give them something to manipulate to be able to form sentences. Um, you know, there's there's until we prove anything, until there's any provens in this field, everything is possible. Right, right, right. Jason? But yeah. What do you think? What do you think we're researching out there? I think we're re researching that there is a middle before people pass on that they are able to communicate for one last time, whether it be through EVP or showing themselves to their loved ones. Right. If that makes sense. Oh, no, it makes, makes perfect sense. Okay, th this conversation has been going on for a while, and I, I have my own opinion of it, but do you think that some are trapped here, or they just prefer to stay here for whatever reason um, I think maybe some are trapped some are afraid you know uh, to go into the light um, unfinished business uh, you know all those reasons uh, we think they're here for their earth back um, I do think maybe some of them are trapped, uh, but I also think some of them are, like you said before, I think they're resi residual. It's just the residual energy that's just passing along through the universe, maybe coming back and repeating itself. Uh, the basics, you know. Well, I, I have I have this new theory on on some hauntings, and and I've been playing with it a lot, and I haven't had a chance to do much research on it. But say there there was a bad accident twenty, thirty, forty, hundred years ago, whenever. I think. Oh, some of them aren't necessarily stuck here. I think they can pass between the veils. And I think sometimes maybe, you know, we go, we go to a certain location because this is where it happened. This is where they're getting the most stuff. I'm thinking that maybe they're sticking around in hopes of maybe altering what had happened. Right. You know, well, it, it, like, like, say... Old Uncle Bud and Cousin Joe were out in the field, and Joe tripped. Uncle Bud ran over him with a tractor 60 years ago, and Joe died. Maybe Joe's coming back trying to get out of the way of the tractor one more time. Or Uncle Joe is, Uncle Bud is coming back to maybe wait the extra 10 minutes before he gets on the tractor. Right. Well... Are you talking like in the sense of uh, being a guardian, guardian angel? Well, a guardian angel or maybe if, if they don't know they've actually passed. Maybe they think, maybe they're reliving something. Maybe it's not so much residual, but they're reliving it over and over in hopes of altering what had actually happened the first time. Kind of, they're kind of groundhog day. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying there. Keep, keep reliving it until they're able to change it, maybe? Right. Or they could be, you know, uh, for example, uh, uh, if it's intelligent, uh, catches itself to you. And, well, and, and they go wherever you want to go. Well, a lot of the places, a lot of the places, what they're considering residual, a lot of them that see a full body or a shadow moving very quickly from one place to another. And my thought is, okay, if there was an accident that either they caused or they could have prevented, it's not so much a residual film type memory imprint, whatever, it's them moving a little faster each time trying to stop that accident mm -hmm. from happening in their world. Or trying to date, right. like in Groundhog Day, Bill Murray's character is attempting to 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 date the specific woman to prove right. to prove his love for that for one specific person, and every time he screws up, he has to start over, and that becomes, of course, the funny premise of the whole movie is his constant starting over. So instead of so much a residual, it's them trying every day to redo it, right? To get the right. end result they're looking for, right. I don't know. Just a theory. And there's a reason why we ask is because um, you've written a book, James. Yes, I have. Uh, um, written by Robin. Story by me. Yeah. But, uh, that has to do called, with the bridge. Yeah. yeah, it's called No One at the Bridge. And it's basically about my experiences as a paranormal investigator out there and what I did and what I experienced for close to 10 years uh, and that's going out to this place three nights a week you know every month for the longest time I guess you could say I, I could eat sleep and breathe this place okay and there's so much has happened out there and I really can't wait for the book to come out because it's long overdue. I think it should have been out maybe three or four years ago. But I, I wanted to get more uh, interesting evidence that I think is interesting, what other people might find interesting, uh, besides just going out there and saying, you know, here's, here's what I got, blah, 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 blah. I wanted more, you know. And... Uh, we just can't wait till it comes out, and hopefully it will be out in October sometime. Just in time. Yeah. So, uh, every year we do uh, the Erie Horror Film Festival. It's a festival uh, here in Erie that uh, they, it's like a horror year. Uh, they bring in stars that were in like old horror movies. Right. And we go in there every year because, you know, we're part of that. And uh, we set up a table. And hopefully, uh, you know, the book will be ready at that time for this, you know. So, yeah. Well, you also sent me some, and we, we're going to be able to show. This is so cool. This is what's cool. Um, you, you sent me over some stuff, and I'm going to go ahead and tell everybody right now when we get here in a little bit, when we get to playing some of the uh, EVP evidence um, right. I'm going to go ahead and apologize in a rush today to, to encode these the, the graphics are a little messed up sound quality is perfect <coughs> just not quite the graphics that I wanted but I want to throw that out there for everybody to see them um, but yeah. you said some very interesting pictures to begin to begin with you said some very interesting pictures from here yeah um, the pictures themselves you know I want everybody to understand that these pictures that I gave to you to show people this is over 10 year period and this isn't like going out there one photo after another this is accumulated over 10 years right. so there's really only about 10 photos that I picked out of thousands and thousands of photos and and I understand you know that you know some people think well oh it's just breath and stuff like that well I'm sorry, you know, 10 years is a long time. For me, I wouldn't waste my time or my reputation getting, you know, rooms with breath, 
I'm sorry. I just wouldn't do that. Right. But one of the theories that I have um, because of this place, um, you have water, you have shale, okay? And the energy, my theory is that if, if you work a place, you investigate a place. I'm going to use the word work instead of investigate for right now. If you work a place, you're respectful because you do believe there's spirits out there. You're going to, in a sense, build a friendship. Hard to believe, but yes, I think you can build a friendship. Now, how that friendship happens is like I said, take the time, be respectful, go out there as many times as you can and work it. Tell them, hey, we're just here to visit or I'm here to talk or something like that. Um, and then you start getting results. And like you said, you know, we'll go back to the, uh, the photos here. With some of these photos, what my theory was is that in talking and you know, it's kind of saying, you know, I'm befriending these spirits. I'm thinking in my mind, well, I take a photo, they're telepathically kind of, you know, think, you know, getting into my thoughts, you know, how I want to perceive them. So what they do is they'll take like fogs and mists and they'll use that energy to manipulate that energy when I snap a photo. And I've been kind of like drifting on that theory for a long, long time. And, and I know there's other people out there that are kind of on that same theory too. Well, that would, that would, that would fall in line with uh, at least one of the theories behind dowsing. Right. You know, one of the theories behind dowsing is not that the spirit is actually interacting with the rods, that it is actual micro-muscular movements that are affecting the rods, but it's, it's spirit channeling through, through you. Right to right. to uh, to actuate the dowsing rods, and that would be that would be the same along the same same theory. Well, and right. we we've been to Old South Pittsburgh enough times to where a lot of people who go there believe the more you go there, the more they get to know you. The more they get to know you, the more they're used to you, and then they'll start, you know, showing themselves a little bit more, a little bit more talk. Because the first time we were there, we didn't get anything, but we kept going back, and every time we go, we get a little bit more, a little bit more. They get a little, they get a little more yeah. used to us, a little more used to us, and yeah. Right, and that, that, that kind of falls along the same, same lines with uh, your audio work. Uh, I can remember when I first started going out to the bridge and running audio, all I would get was one-liners. But now, after 10 years, I'm kind of like getting sentences. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, they're they're in, right now at Old South Pittsburgh. They're the, uh, and, and the thing we love about the hospital is the fact that it's a it's a very repeatable location. It doesn't change. Um, you can perform the same experiment with slight variations, and you don't have to worry about it being in you know you know Bob Smith's front room. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's, right. it, the, the rooms you can go to are not going to change. It's the same room. It's the same. You, you have very controlled atmosphere with it. You don't have at a private residence. Um, they're actually collecting what what Doug Doug down there at the hospital likes to call a, a class A plus plus, and the reason why he gave up that kind of designation is is it's EVPs of spirits talking about the investigators. Yeah, you know sometimes you know believe it or not sometimes I've come across stuff like that yeah. where uh, it it sounds like well to me. It sounds like to me that, like you said, they're talking about the investigators, and they're uh, sometimes you can hear like like it comes across on the audio. Uh, sometimes I use like a uh, well, not an exact bionic ear, but an amplified hearing system, and sometimes it sounds like somebody's you know just like they're, they're following you around, you know, they're, they're observing you, <laughs> and it's yeah. like what's she doing? What's she doing? You know, and then there, and another one will come in and you're like, what's that he's got? You know, things like that. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. 
Um, well, let's 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 show them some of these pictures. The first, uh, let's see. The first one I've got is it's a picture. It's a, it's actually a picture of a, I believe the bridge in the background has two inset pictures in it. Large yeah. white yeah, mist in it. white mist across the top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one of the first photos I ever uh, actually believe I captured something in. Um, that's all, that goes all the way back to 2005, I believe. Um, if you look, if it's the right picture, I think you're talking about, if you look on the right-hand side, it looks like an arm that's going like this. So people can understand. It's going like this. And if you look on the finger, it looks like there might be a, like like a big ruby finger. You know, uh, I don't know if anybody can see that. But yeah, I don't. Let's see. I don't have, quite have the numbers written down for the picture. Um, it looks like a road. Are two two three shots of a road? There's two smaller ones and then a bigger one. But the two smaller shots don't have the mist above it. <coughs> and I don't know what that white thing is. It's, a back, it's the back side of a road sign. Oh. And the, the there it bottom is. inset picture actually has a picture of the road sign on it. But yeah, I mean, that is interesting. You can see it. You know, like somebody, something is reaching out. Yeah, if it's the one I think it is. I wish I could see it here. Um, let's let's move on. To this let's move on to the next the next yeah. one that you sent me. The next one that you sent me was a. Uh, it's actually got some energy pictures in it. It's got it's got the red squiggle in it. Yeah, the big red streamer. Easiest way to describe it on the bottom right corner. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 What that red thing is, I have no clue. I ask people all the time, you think you know what it is? They don't know. The only, the only explanation or thing they'll say to you is, oh, can you, camera failure. I'm like, well, how can it be camera failure when the camera took the shot? You know? <laughs> well, but it, then it can't be an extended some, exposure because the rest of the background is clear and focused. Right, and, then, and, and some people... Uh, uh, they say it looks like a cartilage. Well, that's kind of spooky. <laughs> and it does kind of look like cartilage. Yeah. Um, uh, let me ask you a question. You have two pictures on the ends that are inset into that one also that that resemble a face. What? On the left-hand side of that picture, you have two blown-up pictures inset into that picture? Yeah, yeah, that... That's um, what I'm seeing, okay? And it, to me, it looks like an old man. And basically what I did, I just cut it out. Um, and all I did was brought the uh, brightness down. Right. And then right. gave it some color. So it's basically just so people could see what I'm seeing, you know? And, you know, I understand, you know, the whole concept of uh, matrixing and paradola and all that. But, you know, I, I'm one of those people that simply just don't believe that it's all matrixing and paradola. Right. Um, and I'm not afraid to say so. You know, I, I, like I said, you know, I put 10 years in here in your to work in a grid, you know, and stuff I have, you know. Well, my, I think our biggest thing here, our, our biggest thing that, that we've ever had an issue with is simply, yeah. uh, uh, you know, there, there's some painfully obvious pictures. You know, when somebody goes upstairs into an attic. Right. And you've got four people walking around in an enclosed space of about 100 square feet that hasn't been opened in, let's say, 30 years. You know what? Right. You're probably not going to catch an energy orb in there. You're probably got an ass load of dust floating around in front of the autofocus and in front of your lens. So I'm going to have to say that majority of what you're taking a picture of is probably not paranormal in nature. It's probably unclean in nature, but it's not unclean in a dirty, evil kind of way. 
Um, right, right, right. That's that's the kind of stuff we're trying to get people to avoid. What you, what we're showing here with you, this is not. You show me a bug that can put out an energy trail like that, I'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, right. That that's that's the big di- that's the big difference. And 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 some orbs, I I'll be honest with you, I hate orb pictures, but some orbs, because of the situation, cannot be explained away as bugs or dust or moisture. A lot of them can. Right. A lot of them can. I think I think the closest thing that we have. Uh, what I would consider an orb are three orbs that actually were caught on video out there. I think you're going to show them a little later. Yeah, uh, yeah, we do. We, we've got them loaded up and ready to go. Um, next picture, let's see. The next picture I've got is actually a picture from the field. And it looks like you have four pictures and laid into that one. Yeah, that, that one there, that, I was out one night at the bridge and like I said, you know, working it. And I was going around and I was like, well, I was thinking, well, there's some fog out there in the field. And I'm like, show me the difference. I was thinking to myself, show me the difference. Show me the difference between you and fog or something. Give me something, please, you know? And I shot off four shots in a row and this was, you could see the fog coming in near my Jeep. And I shot four shots off in a row, and this was in one of the photos. And if you look at this photo, you look to the, to the left, you see what the fog. And the fog is basically almost out of focus. And then you go to the right, and you see, you can tell, if you can't tell the difference, you know, that's fine. But I can't, and other people can too. But if you look at the top, uh, there's a lot of people tell me they see a wing. Okay? And then right below the wing, they'll tell me it looks like an old lady's face with eyes and a bun hairdo. And then the rest of it, they, they, they come up with so many stuff. major thing. The main thing about that one is if you can see the wing, what looks like a wing, and then the old lady's face. I can see her face. It's very interesting. Um, and you've had these. I, I, obviously, I can also see that you threw one into a negative, and just so everybody knows, digital photography does not actually have negatives. Or were these actually thirty-five millimeter? Oh, they were digital. Because okay. this is digital negative. Yeah, that's uh. That I, I have that same option on the the program I use for our, our photo review, and it's really right. it's really really a helpful tool, um, especially when you take a dark picture in a dark space, right. and you throw that negative on there because all it is is an algorithm that's the exact opposite of the color. But there's right. been times that we've actually seen things, um, you know, we've been sent pictures before of, of people that were in fog banks, and they're like, right. well, I see this, and we're like, okay, well let's let's do it but when you pull it and you throw it through that program and you still get something that's not matrixing and it's not paradelia um, it's very hard to explain away seeing a face in something that you couldn't see before you reversed it right you know you never even knew it was there but oh my god you know so yeah that's a very valuable tool that a lot of people I don't think utilize enough <coughs> because there's also some pictures that they claim to be uh, paranormal that if you throw, right. throw it in the reverse, the first thing you go is, oh, well, okay, well, it was a bat or a dog or whatever. You know, there's the, it, right. it helps to explain what you're doing. A lot of people don't use that enough. Yeah. I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, let's see. That. The next to the last one I have. This one is going to be, uh, looks like it's the bottom of the bridge. No. Well, there's, some, uh, there's a wooden structure on the bottom. I think maybe that's... Um, I think I know which one you're talking about. Trees to the left, and there's a, a mist formation. Trees. Let's see. Yeah, I think maybe that one is the uh, one that the photos actually turned and flipped. Oh, uh, okay. 
and would be showing the bridge inside the bridges or top of the bridge would be to the left if it's the one I think it is and uh, see I see things in there too um, it's like a guy on the left hand side uh, and near him near the bottom left to the right you'll see what looks like uh, it looks like skulls I don't know if you see that or not. Yep. I see it. Yeah. And that's a pretty interesting photo because I, I remember I was talking to a psychic out of Chicago I met. And we were just having a discussion, you know, about the veil. And we got into it about how the veil is thinner around October and November 2nd. Um, is what she was telling me. And I was telling her, you know, about the bridge. And when she, she read, she came across with, um, that there's three, three spirits out there. And they're the main three. And, but there's also others. Many. Okay. So uh, I, we kept, you know, talking about it and stuff like that. And she finally said to me, she goes, James, she goes, why don't you take your camera out on Halloween night and you're going to get some. So I did. And this was a result of that, that photo, you know. Well, it, it, yeah. if the picture is in reverse or flipped... On the on, she had when on, on the when side it, of it under the mist. It looks like there's a little girl. Yeah, it could mm -hmm. be, and that could very well be if you're seeing that because there was a little girl that fell off the cliff in 1964. She has short brown hair, and it looks like a blue top or dress. Wow, that, you just gave yeah, me that's, the goosebumps. That's, wow. You just gave me the goosebumps. Tip your, waitress, tip your waitresses, she'll be here all week. <laughs> I, uh, but it's under, I, it's under the mist. It, it's next to the structure. It's not actually in the air. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, see, sometimes I think when it comes to... Uh, their dimension, uh, the dimension is when we look at it or we perceive no. it. Uh, it's it can be That's five feet off the ground, upside down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's so different. But uh, well, it, look, it looks like uh, there's like a light. Her arm maybe up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and something, some type of light in her hand. Did uh? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you this just just to satisfy my own curiosity. Um, were her parents there at the bridge a lot? I don't know. Um, I don't know the parents. Um, Speci well, specific. Well, according according to what I read of, about this per particular incident, it was supposed to be like folklore about this little girl, and he actually found that it wasn't. That right. there, there actually right. was an right. incident. So, I mean, it, it had been a while and, you know, stories travel and change and alter to fit whatever, whoever you want to creep out at the moment. But you actually found out she really did fall off the bridge and, and die. Right, 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 right. And the only reason I asked about the parents is because when I look at that picture, um, and, and I'm pretty sure you know the one we're talking about, um, if you look directly above what is actually the signage on the side of the bridge, directly right. below that, I see a, a face with a 50s, a male 50s type haircut. I mean, directly below that, directly below that signage. That's that's the first thing that came across to me. Now I don't know if it's. I mean, I, I guess it could be paradigia with the um, the rafters behind it. But it, it's almost like it's it's screaming. There's the mouth open, eyes, nose, hair. 
That's that's why I asked because if Kim can see the little girl, I'm seeing something else that's like yelling. That's what I see. Right. So I, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, we'll, we'll definitely have to pull this picture up after the show, and I'll, I'll show you where she's at. Yeah, I really want to see this. Well, I have, I have a photo that I use uh, when I lecture, and it's pretty interesting uh, because it actually looks like a little girl too. And I don't know if you know, but uh, back in December. Uh, I had a heart attack, and a mist going out to the bridge uh, for about three or four months. And over the past six years, I've been trying to find a photograph of this little girl, you know, that fell off the bridge. Mm -hmm. And I got home February 2nd to my place here, you know, going through the, you know, the rehab and stuff like that. And... In my mailbox uh, was a, an email from one of the historians uh, out in Gerard. That's where the bridge is located out that way. And attached was a photo of this little girl. Did she have short brown hair? Yes. Yes, she did. And when I looked at the photo, it dawned on me that... Wow, I have a photo that almost looks exactly like her. Mm -hmm. And I use this photo at lectures because it's just amazing the imprint of how it looks like her. You know, it's the same haircut. Uh, she has a little hair sticking up in the back. Like, you know, I don't know if you remember, like, alfalfa from the little rascals. Yeah, the cowlicks. Yeah, it has a little cowlick or it's a little bow, but it, it's in this photo that I, I, I took on the bridge in the mist. And, it, and, it, and it kind of, it's kind of a different mist photo because it, it basically almost looks like an imprint, you know, an imprint of a little girl. But I'll have to show you that sometime and show you her photo. Oh, yeah. There's only one condition, though. Okay. You gotta get the book first. <laughs> well, you know, you could send me the book. That, that's very true. And then I'll show you where the little girl is in the picture. See, see how that that works. She's yeah. ruth. She's ruthless, man. I ain't, I ain't lying. She's hard to deal with sometimes. All right. Well, let's 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 show everybody this one last one real real quick so we can uh, get to these EVPs because these are really the EVPs are really interesting. Um, this last picture right here, and it's just a picture straight on from the mist, um, or, or of the bridge. Um, and there's, there's, there is some mist or something in front. Um, I was just curious, do you have to remember this one right offhand? Does it have, uh, two other smaller photos inside? No, 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 it's all by itself. And it has, has the sign above the wooden, I, I guess... The, the roof over the bridge, there, there's a white sign. Or well, there was. Yeah. Maybe and, that's the one I was talking about. I don't know. I don't know which one you're talking about. Uh-oh. <laughs> this, one, this one has a mist, but but some of it looks red. Some of it looks red. It does right. over here. Is that the one with maybe the, the donkey or the horse? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Looks like yeah. uh, looks like the last numbers on it are going to be nine five three six zero three on the name of the photo. I can't remember. Well, there's two I'm more shots. Guys. He sent three shots, but one has the mist, and then the other two over there don't. Yeah, this is the one that's no. It's by it's, it's a picture of the bridge by itself. There's nothing inset into this one. Okay, maybe maybe that maybe that's one that uh, I sent that there wasn't nothing in. I don't know. Because you can you can very much see a face in this one. It's a very large face, actually. Yeah. 
There. They have a. Is it? Does it look like it's looking at a road and a sign? What? It, yeah, it's 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 a picture of the bridge. Uh, it's got a white sign that's almost dead center right. in the middle of the picture. That has the uh, height limit. Height or weight? Yes. Does it say height or weight? Yeah, yes. I think so. We can't see it real close. Yeah, but there's a there's a major like face off in the mist to the right, just to the right of the center. Right there. Yeah, copyright. Does it have the paranormal group on the top of it? No, it says uh, it's got your copyright on the bottom of it for 2006. Boy, I'm. I sent. <laughs> I'm stuck. Well, see, when you take ten years worth of pictures, you you, you tend to forget which which numbers which. Yeah, um, I think you should look at the the one where there's two photos in set, and it has paranormal group A2 2011 in our logo. That's the one you need no, to look at. That one. That one. Yep. And if you can see the eye, then you see what everybody else sees. And that's a real photo, folks. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got a question for you, James. Do you, what do you want, what do you want to show the, the, the people next? You want to do, you want to do the EVPs for them? Or you want to do the video? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. If you want to shoot the videos up, we can show them those, those lights, you know. Okay. Well, let me, uh, and we want everybody to remember this is all taken from the same location. Um, so yeah. let me let me I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it play. It's actually gonna play twice probably um, for everybody. Uh, And we were simply just walking up to go inside the bridge, okay? And I was standing there looking in my viewfinder, and I saw the first light go up. And then I lifted my head up, looked inside, didn't see anything. And then I looked over to Donnie, who was on my left-hand side, and I asked him, I go, are you shining a flashlight? And I'm looking for his flashlight, and he doesn't have no flashlight that is shining in the bridge. And I'm like, I look back again, you know, down to the viewfinder, and then there's one last light. But I didn't know there was a second light, okay? So <clears throat> I stopped the uh, camera, and I rewound it, and I'm looking at these lights, and I see the second light, and I'm like, Don, I'm like, look at this. I, go, I don't know what this is to the bridge and we were going, went over to the other side and you know thinking well maybe somebody was doing something with like some flares or something like that but uh there was nobody there nobody there at all so uh we went back and we tried repeating it we, we found out that you know that it was about 74 feet from where i was standing and what we noticed would be like right off the bat is that there's no reflection no reflection at all off these lights yes. and the other interesting thing about it too is that you couldn't see it with your naked eye you only see these lights on the infrared camera that is interesting and if there's no reflection that means you'd have a a, a light running basically across the top of the roof there and for everybody out there, right. this is a slow mo. This is a slowed down version of the video that's playing right now. Um, yeah, when you when you the, the second light is the most interesting because it actually comes kind of slow and then it just explodes out. And when I talk about the reflection, there's no reflection. This would be, like I said, seventy four feet just inside the other side of the bridge. So there should be reflection, but there's not. Wow. And you know, and that's the that's the kind of data 
that when you get it, that's the kind of stuff that makes you go, okay. <laughs> I want to go yeah. back. I want to um, go back. I want to go back. You know, that's it is. It is. It's the stuff that fuels you. It's the stuff that keeps you going. Yeah. Okay, folks. Like once again, let me apologize for the once again the graphic on this didn't <laughs> it do real well. That's his fault, not James. Yeah, it's it's my fault. Um, uh, the, the audio, the audio is perfect. Um, so each one of these is going to play three times. Um, I didn't give a clue as to what we think we hear until the third time it plays. So um, this first one actually has to do with uh, a tree. I don't want to give it away to the viewers until we actually play it. A tree in your hand. <coughs> the bottom of your hand. Okay, you can stop at any time. Yeah. Okay, here you go. Here it is. That one, that one, pretty, pretty clear, pretty clear on that one. About what it says about palm. Yeah, palm. That's what I got. That's what we got. Yeah, palm. Did that apply to anything down there that that happened down there? I don't think it applies to anything that happened, but I don't know. Sometimes I think you have spirit that's coming across and they could be religious and you know palms is pretty clear that came across pretty clear but sometimes uh you'll get uh we were just out there about four nights ago yeah, four nights ago and uh we were doing a session on a spirit box and i was i was asking you know who's here who's here and i kept saying paul I'm like, well, I don't know who Paul is. That somebody knew, you know. And uh, I, I go, I go, well, I go, Paul, well, are you okay, Paul? And then he said, sick. And he came across on the box, sick. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm just going along with it. And then I ask, uh, oh, well, there, there's any spirits here. Can you please help Paul because Paul feels sick and he doesn't need to be sick where he's at. And we went on to like maybe five or ten minutes more without anything saying, you know, about Paul or anything like that. And then we came back to it, and I, I said, uh, Paul, are you still here? And he said, no. And so I'm like, no. And then and I go, well, did anybody help Paul? Because Paul felt sick. And it came over on the box, and it said, God. So... I don't know, <laughs> you know. And palms, um, palms could also be psalms. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. All right, well, let's do this next one. This next one is a woman's name. It's pretty interesting stuff. But you, you, you guys will catch it. Let me play that real quick. was also pretty pretty clear yeah that that was actually captured in um the erie land lighthouse uh, we have a lighthouse out here and we did uh three investigations out there and that was actually captured in that lighthouse and get this it's made out of limestone i believe that do you know who shelly dupree was no we i had somebody uh Try to look her up. I tried to look up that name. It just wasn't coming up with anything. And you never know because it could have, you know, Erie, Erie and Waterford and this area, you had Indians around, you know. And uh, I think it's simply a census wasn't, it could be somebody that there wasn't a census taken yet that it could be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well let's let's get to this next one. It's uh, this next one is called check listings. You, you guys will hear it. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Is 
there anybody? Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Yeah, that's 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 pretty clear. Jason explained that yeah. one. He captured that. <clears throat> that was at a uh, private residence that we were doing an investigation at. And when we heard that, we really didn't understand what it was trying to tell us. And once we started getting into it, we ended up checking for the death, death listings in the paper and checking on who may have passed away in the house. Right. It's kind of like what you said, Ken, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's interesting how that comes about. It's interesting how they can steer us, isn't it? Right. Well, they right. were here first. They do it before we did. Exactly. Well, um, I remember one time I was out at the bridge and I had <laughs> my amplified hearing system on. And I was standing there and there was a, there was a couple of people over on the other side of the road. And uh, I was watching them because they were... They were fiddling around with something, you know, a piece of equipment, putting batteries in it. And I uh, was watching them, and then all of a sudden, over the amplified hearing system, uh, this female voice came across, and it was like almost, it was like almost a whole sentence. You know, it said, "Get out of the road." So I got out of the road, and like five minutes after that, a car came by. You know, so. All right, well, let me play, because we're running out of time, gentlemen. I'm going to skip to this one just because I liked it the most. And I'm going to play this, and we'll let everybody f listen to this one. Okay. That's pretty. That's yeah. pretty. That's pretty shocking stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Now that's from the bridge. Very cool. Have things calmed down at the bridge? Um, you know, when it, when it, when the two kids set it on fire, uh, I stopped going out for a little bit, but then I started going back out, and it seemed like all was lost, you know, like there's nothing here anymore. Right. But I started reworking it and it's kind of like, it's, it's interesting that it's kind of like slowly coming back. You know, it's almost like it's slowly coming back. They're not afraid anymore because they were afraid, you know? Right. So, <clears throat> it'll be in the book. Right, Kim? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> buy the book the book is called no one at the bridge right and so everybody knows that uh, I was also in uh, Robin Marie's first film Ghost of Fire about Centralia Pennsylvania that's what our my ghost story is about uh, we're doing a second version of that film uh, called uh, Ghost of Fire 2, uh, Search for the Molly Maguires. Uh, in case everybody wants to know. Of course. And you will be back on Monday to discuss yes. with and with uh, Robin Marie about, right. about right. your episode on My Ghost Story. Exactly. And I can't wait. Me either. Maybe I'll have the book by then. I'm just, oh, I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> okay, Thank gentlemen. Um, as much as I hate to do this, I've got to cut out here. I've got another show I've got to do here in just a few minutes. But remember, guys, holidays are coming up. Books make great stocking yes, stuffers. Get the book. Put it in a stocking for someone. They'll love it. James, Thank Jason, you. thank you so much for being with us tonight. We should, we surely do appreciate it. Thank, uh, you. thank you for having us. Thank you, and I will talk to you Monday. Sounds good. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yeah, have a good night. You're welcome. You too. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Okay, guys, uh, that was James McCann and Jason Gervais. Mm -hmm. uh, be sure to get the book when it comes out. Um, that's some interesting stuff, especially recorded at the same location. And there better be some pictures in it, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> um, please tune in tomorrow night for Spiritually Raw's weekly wrap-up show. Um, they will be here. And Sunday at 8.30 Eastern, tune in for Cooking with Jack. And at 9 o'clock, you've got Marie Foyer. 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 You keep trying to make her French. She's China. not. I know. Within in, enlightened numbers. And then on Monday, on Just Saying, at 8 o'clock mm -hmm. Eastern Time, we will be back, myself and the lovely Mary G, with Robin Marie and James McCain about their episode on My Ghost Story. And directly following those guys will be Cece the Huntress. And then tune in Tuesday for Spirit Factivity. And Wednesday. I know there's Jody and Misha. PMPI mm -hmm. and Universal Sight. Thursday is Tim Rancorn with Tech Time and Serial Killer Thursday. Lots coming up. It's, it's a change in folks. We told you. Buckle up. Keep all hands and feet inside the ride, please. And there's the lovely Mary right now in the chat room. Yes, it is. And Mary is going to be my boss here in about... 20 minutes if you don't get to work. 20 minutes. I need to get to work. Be safe. Be kind. Have a great weekend. And we will see you tomorrow night. Yes, we shall. We're out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.